Welcome to the Strategic Management Accounting course, where we teach the value-adding steps and processes necessary to execute strategy. Whether you are just starting up or looking to grow your business, then this course is for you. With your host, Dr. Neil O'Connor. Hi, it's Neil here, and we're looking at evaluating strategy. This is the top part of the balance scorecard. We're trying to evaluate strategy by looking at the different patterns in the financial reporting results. So there are different patterns depending on which area your strategy is focused on. Are you focusing on differentiation or leadership? And based on that strategy that you're following, then you're going to put more emphasis on the growth component, the price recovery component, or the productivity component. Now let me just give you the big picture before we get into the details of these three components. Here's the big picture here, all right? Look, we've got companies, big corporates have CEO, they have CFO, they have CIOs, they've got C everything, the C-suite, C managers. And look, they pay attention to, guess what? financial accounting measures. They pay attention to the accounting measures. And why do you think that is the case? Of course, because their stakeholders are the public, as a public company, the stakeholders are shareholders. They are institutions, they are regulatory bodies. They have to demonstrate earnings growth. They have to report earnings every quarter. They have to meet analyst estimates. They are look at those stakeholders all the time to provide information about how their company is going economically. The financial accounting numbers is the best, it's not it's not perfect, but is the best economic representation of how the company is going. And this is what they pay attention to. Of course, there are other parts of the balance scorecard, but we just in this section, we just want to focus on the financial parts and it is the financial measures that get the attention of the CEO, the CFO and the CIO. Now we know there are other measures in the balance call card. We know that you cannot control the financial measure. Of course, there's earnings management. We know that. But this is not about earnings management. This is about executing strategy. And we look to the financial measures to get a general idea which parts of our strategy are working, which parts of our strategy are not working. Of course, there are non-financial measures down here which reflect how much training you're doing in the organization. How are you engaging the employees? How strong is the culture? Is it a tight-knit culture or everyone sort of seems to be doing what they want to be doing? What about the IT system and information support across the organization? These are the three things that are very important for learning and growth. And yes, there are important measures for learning and growth. Yes. What about internal process? Yes, there are important measures here. The quality, lead time, throughput time, cycle time. There's a lot of time measures involved in the internal process of whatever you're doing. You're delivering a service. What is the lead time for which you can get a website up for your client? If you are taking an order for the export of goods to the USA, what is the lead time for when you can produce that container load of goods. Internal processes are very much time driven and also quality driven. So we're gonna look at that in other, another section, all right? But, and of course, there's the customer. That's another part of the balance scorecard. We know that and the customer, are they satisfied? Are they going to come back? You know, famous hotel group, Hilton Hotels. Two major questions they ask, okay? What is the likely that you'll return to the hotel? after your stay, and what is the likelihood that you would recommend us to a friend? And uh, some 
friends of mine in academia, they actually studied, they studied the chain of the Hilton Group in terms of the customer feedback on those two dimensions. And they actually found that they were related to future financial performance of that hotel chain. Isn't that interesting that we have these non-financial measures, specifically these customer measures being related to financial measures but they were not related to the financial measures in the same period. It was a future period. So keep in mind, yes, there are very important measures, non-financial measures that management need to pay attention to day to day, week to week, week, month to month to understand how strategy is being executed. So these measures can give feedback. They could give feedback on the day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week operations to decide whether do we need to do more training? Do we need to do more customer engagement? Do we need to improve the operations and our services are delivered or how goods are being produced? Okay, so the all of these non-financial information measures give feedback for big decisions, but it is the financial measures here that get the attention of the CEO, the CFO, the CIO, because they are the they are responsible to the ultimate stakeholder, the board of directors, the shareholders, the institutions, the regulatory bodies, when they file the tax return, when they report their accounting numbers. So you can see that no matter how important the non-financial measures they are, and this is what you can control on a day-to-day -day basis, it is the financial measures that are going to get the attention of the CEO, the CFO, the CIO. So then that will feed back into big decisions. So what do you need to know as an accountant? You need to know how to get the attention of the CFO, the CIO, the CEO. So therefore, now that you know that they're focusing on the financial accounting, when you put a project to these C managers, you need to explain to them how it's going to affect the bottom line. And in other words, how is it going to affect the financial measures? You can't just say, oh, this is going to improve customer engagement. This is going to improve customer satisfaction. This is going to improve worker productivity. This is going to improve the efficiency of production. Production time is going to be faster. Yes, you can say that, but then you're going to say that's going to feed into lowering of our costs, increased productivity and or increased capacity. And it will maybe enable us to make a better product. And so we can raise the price that will feed into greater profits, greater revenue growth, and greater margin growth. And so once you start linking how your initiative, which is very operational, so your initiative may be focused on the customer. It may be focused on getting employee engagement. It also may be focused on the factory, re-engineering parts of the factory or making different parts of the factory, changing from re-engineering different parts of the factory, for example, taking out some assembly workers and replacing them with robots. Okay, you need to then draw back your initiative back to, okay, how is that going to be related to the bottom line in future profits, future costs, and margin growth and revenue growth? So think about all these issues because ultimately any initiative you have You've got to say, how does it affect the bottom line? And then you get the attention of the CEO, the CFO, the CIO. When you get their attention, then they can make the big decisions to allocate resources. And yes, they you get the green light. You see that there's a green, see it green? That's the green light. And you're not going to get that green light if you cannot link your non-financial measures to financial measures. 
This is a key capability that you need to have as an accountant yeah. in your organization. And ultimately, the big decisions can result in, well, let's do more training. Yes, yes, let's invest in some robotics or more machinery because we can see the linkage to the bottom line. Or let's invest in more customer engagement or go into a particular market that we haven't been in before. So let's think about this. At the end of the day, you want big decisions to be made by the big managers and those big decisions are about the allocation of resources and you as a manager a middle level manager or below you want to get their attention you need to link your initiative to a financial bottom line result to a financial bottom line difference then you're going to get their attention then they're going to make the big decision to give money for your initiative so there you go this is what we mean by the decision relevance of financial and non-financial measures inside the firm in the next section i'll take you through different parts of the financial measures that are relevant that manage that top managers are going to be focusing on growth component price recovery component and a cost component these three parts have different emphasis depending on the strategy of the organization so i'll see you in the next section thank you and catch you in the class bye for now Thank you.